Jack Grealish is the best player in Birmingham, no doubt about that. At the moment, Aston Villa is the best club in Birmingham. How do you take the next step? How do you go from relegation battles via mid-table mediocrity to break the top six? To help you achieve that, here's the Aston Villa club guide for FM21. We start off with a bit of club history. Aston Villa were founded in 1874, playing at their current home ground, Villa Park, since 1897. They have won both the Football League First Division and the FA Cup seven times each and the League Cup five times. The club is also one of five English clubs to have won the European Cup. But it was back in 1981-82. The biggest period of success came over a hundred years ago with six league titles between the years of 1893 and 1910. The most successful period in modern time came under managers Ron Atkinson and Brian Little in the mid-90s with two League Cup titles. Since their ninth place finish in 2010-11, Aston Villa have managed a 15th place finish in the Premier League as their best result. Last season the club returned after three seasons down in the Championship. So this is where you, the new manager, come into the picture. You have just been appointed manager. The fans have high hopes that you will be the new Ron Atkinson. As you sit down for your first meeting with the board, you are introduced to the club vision. Two things become clear when you look at club culture. The board want you to play attacking football and they want you to do it with young players, developing players through the youth system and refraining from signing players older than 28 suggests that the Villa board want to build long term from the ground up. When it comes to on pitch performance, the bar is set quite high. The board want an immediate mid table finish, a huge leap compared to previous seasons. If you achieve that, then the board calm down a bit you get the next four years to go from mid-table to an established Premier League team. What about facilities? To aid you, Aston Villa provide great facilities, both for the first team players and the academy. Superb training facilities and excellent youth facilities is among the top ones in English football. The junior coaching and youth recruitment levels is lacking a bit though which means that you may have to get used to some par intake days until this is improved. But what does the actual team look like? The best 11 looks okay. Two players stand out and they are both found in central midfield. Barkley and Grelish are the two biggest names. They are also pivotal to the success of the team. A keeper position also seems strong for a team of this level. If we look at the squad overview, this notion grows stronger. There are some quality players in central midfield besides Barkley and Grealish. They also have McGinn as a valid central midfield option. Can you fit all of them into the starting 11? The goalkeeper position also looks really strong with two solid keepers. What about key players then? Well, Let's focus on the three players that are important enough to be classified as key players in my book, and they are all central midfielders. John McGinn, the meatball, is a very well-rounded central midfielder, a workhorse with a work rate of 16 as his best attribute. He is not entirely defensively minded though, with a vision of 15 and passing of 14, he can distribute a ball or two. Jack Grealish. Him and John McGinn are very much alike, but they do differ a bit, and in the differences we find their individual strengths. Grealish is the better dribbler, with a flair of 17, allowing him to do the unpredictable. Ross Barkley, the Chelsea loanee, offers very much the same as the two previous ones. Fitting all of these three into a system provides a high-class midfield with the possibility to use a passing-oriented style of play. OK, so squad depth. This screen might seem a bit cluttered and tough to navigate, but it is very helpful if you know what you are looking for. Here they basically list the positional depth for every single position, which is the reason it feels cluttered. Your job is to ignore the positions that you don't intend to use and instead focus on the ones that are important to your tactic. 
Generally, the midfield looks really strong, just as I've highlighted previously. But the defense lacks both quality and depth, as well as the striker position. Finances then, let's take a quick glance at the financial side of things at Aston Villa. And mm, this isn't brilliant. An overall balance of 7 million in the treasure chest basically means that you will have to work with the squad you've got. If you want to strengthen the squad, you will need to sell it first. When we come to budgets, 2.5 million won't get you anywhere in this market. You need to sell in order to get enough money to strengthen the squad but you do have a little bit of wage budget to work with. Before we delve into the transfer market though, let's see if we can use the academy to find a few more or less hidden gems. Mm, this overview of the players age 21 or younger isn't great. My first impression is that this is a bit of a sorry sight. Not a single five star potential wonder kid means that you probably have to accept the fact that you won't have many players breaking into the first team squad during the next few years. But let's look at the guys who are closest. Louis Barry, young striker, the dream of every club. And for Aston Villa, this is very fitting as well, since they lack both great strikers in the first team and the money to sign one. Oliver Sur. The 16-year-old Polish keeper will have to develop a lot if he's going to get a chance in the first squad in the next few years, but he does have the potential to develop a lot though. Kani Shukwemeka, say that fast 10 times in a row. No, we're not going to say that fast 10 times in a row. Being a young central midfielder at Aston Villa is tough considering how many good players you have in front of you in the queue. Shukwemeka, is a determined young player with a decent attacking foundation to build on. Will he make it or that? Not. We'll see. Okay, so how do we strengthen this squad without a transfer budget? Well, considering the good quality at midfield, it would be great if we could sign someone to take advantage of the chances created. This is our man. Mario Mansukic feels like a great option. He's certainly a commanding presence in the box, and equally important, he's available for free. At age 34, he isn't a long term option, but he may be your best bet to help you reach that mid table finish. So, final verdict an Aston Villa save is going to be a challenging but fun one. A bit of a lopsided squad leads you a bit vulnerable in defence and toothless up front. How can you use your strong midfield and at the same time build for the future without any money? Considering Aston Villa's league finishes in the last couple of years, the board expectations seem tough. If you manage to survive at the job through a mid-table finish, things become a little easier for you with several years time for a bit of a rebuild. But if you cannot improve the squad, Aston Villa may very well remain in the bottom regions of the Premier League and you are most likely out of the job. <laughs>